Hello, and welcome to another episode. This episode is all about the Ten Commandments. That's why I like this picture I took in the background, because it, it looks like two stone tablets. So it's just something I'm trying using a background like this. So I hope we learn many words connected to the Ten Commandments. Let's learn. So the Ten Commandments. These come from Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So here we have the word bondage, bondage, bondage. This just simply means being a slave. So bondage. So I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, the word bondage. Verse four, you shall not make for yourselves an idol, nor any image of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So an idol, idol, idol. Something that represents a God that you worship. An image is a picture of the likeness of something. So, idol, an image. So, you shall not make for yourselves something that represents a God that you worship, nor any picture of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So verse five, we have these words, bow and serve. You shall not bow yourself down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and on the fourth generation of those who hate me. So bow, bow, bow. You bend at the knee or waist, bow. To show submission or respect. To serve is to help a person or organization by doing things for them. Bow and serve. Then we have this word jealous. Jealous, jealous. So this is the word jealous. To envy someone because of what they have or have done. And to envy is you feel uncomfortable because you want what someone else has. So this idea of jealous. Then we have this word iniquity, iniquity. Iniquity, iniquity. This is immoral behavior or an injustice, something that happens wrongly to you. So your behavior or something that happens to you. So now we have these words, bow, serve, jealous, and iniquity. So now we can say, you shall not bend at the knee or waist down to them, nor help them. For I, Yahweh, your God, am an envious God, visiting the immoral behavior of the fathers on the children, on the third and on the fourth generation of those who hate me. So bow, serve, Jealous and iniquity. Now in verse six, we have this. And showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Loving kindness. Loving kindness. Loving kindness. You are considerate and tender towards someone. You're loving to them. 
So now we can say, and showing tenderness and consideration to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Loving kindness. You shall not misuse the name of Yahweh, your God, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who misuses his name. So misuse, misuse, misuse. This is to use for wrong purposes or in an incorrect way. Guiltless is innocent or having no guilt. So misuse, we would use this like when you use God's name as a swear word. Like if you use Jesus Christ as his title, okay. But if you use it as a swear word, that becomes misuse. And guiltless, right? You might have in a court of law, he's pronounced innocent or guiltless. So now you can say, you shall not use in an incorrect way the name of Yahweh, your God. For Yahweh will not hold him innocent who incorrectly uses his name. Right? So he will not say that you're innocent. He'll say that you're guilty. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So here we have Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. So this is a day of rest with no work and contemplation and worship of God. So the idea is you don't work, you take a day off, but you don't just go play golf, right? You take the day off to worship God, maybe think about God, maybe pray about God. So that's the idea of the Sabbath. And holy means dedicated to God. So again, you don't take the day off to watch movies necessarily, but you try to dedicate it to God, learning about God. So remember the day of rest and worship to keep it dedicated to God. So Sabbath day and holy. Verse 12 says this, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land, which Yahweh your God gives you. So this idea of honor, 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 this means to show great respect and admiration. So if you honor someone, you show great respect to them, right? You maybe bow to them. In Asian color, excuse me, in Asian cultures, you bow to people who are older than you to show them honor and respect. So this is that idea. You'd literally bow to your father and your mother. I know in some of the old television shows, when the father came home, they'd meet him at the door, take his coat, take his briefcase, and show him respect because he worked at his job all day. But also if a mother comes home and she's worked hard. In these older movies, you might meet your mother at the door, take her stuff, you know, show her to her chair. So the idea of honor. So this becomes show great respect and admiration to your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land, which Yahweh your God gives you. So this idea of honor. In verse 13, it says this, you shall not murder. So murder, murder, murder. This is when you kill someone and you planned it before it happened. So this is a little bit different from killing. Murder is premeditated. You thought of it before and you carried out your plan. So murder, 
pre-planned killing. Murder. You shall not kill someone and plan it before it happened. So the idea of murder. Number 14, or verse 14, says this. You shall not commit adultery. So commit, commit, commit. This is when you actually do something and not just think about it. So when you have a commitment, like a marriage commitment, you think about it beforehand and you don't just think about it now, you actually go through with it and do it. I'm making a commitment to you. And adultery, adultery is relations with a married person who is not your husband or wife. So this could be worded. You shall not have relations with a married person who is not your husband or wife. Commit adultery. Verse 16 says this. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. So now we have false testimony. False testimony. False testimony. This is an untrue formal statement in written or spoken form, done publicly. So I give a public statement, but it's untrue. So this passage says, don't do this against your neighbor. So this becomes, you shall not really want to have your neighbor's house. You shall not really want to have your neighbor's wife nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. So then we have some, those are the actual 10 commandments. So here's some other verses just around the 10 commandments. So Exodus 24, 12, Yahweh said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commands that I have written, that you may teach them. So we have the law, 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 law. This is rules God asks his people to live by. So these are God's laws. Yahweh said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the stone tablets with the rules and the commands that I have written that you may teach them. So laws. Exodus 31, 18. When he finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the covenant, stone tablets written with God's finger. Covenant, covenant, covenant. This is a binding promise. This is a binding promise between two parties. They define what you should do and what you can expect. So this becomes, he gave Moses the two tablets of the agreement, stone tablets written with God's finger. So the idea of a covenant. So from Matthew chapter 19, verse 17, he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, Keep the commandments. 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 This is from the word commanded, right? This is not a request, but an order. Do this now. So a commandment is just a formalized command, you know, written down, formalized. So a commandment. So remember, these are 10 commandments. They're not 10 suggestions. 
So these are something that we absolutely should do. So now Matthew 19, original passage was 16 through 24. So in verse 17 becomes this. He said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the formalized orders. Matthew 19, 20. The young man said to him, all these things I have observed from my youth. What do I still lack? Observed. 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 State that you have actually kept the law or practice. So when you observe something, like if you observe the Old Testament Sabbath, you observe the, the Sabbath, that's just saying you actually do it, right? You do it as prescribed in the Old Testament. So a youth, that's the time between being a child and an adult. So some people might call this the teenage years. Some people say the youth is just before the teenage years. So you're not quite a child. You're certainly not an adult yet. And lack, lack means you don't have enough or any of something. So if you have a lack of food, right? You're hungry, you need more food. So you have a lack something that you still need. So the young man said to him, all these things I have actually kept from my childhood until now. What do I still not have enough of? Matthew 19, 23. Jesus said to his disciples, most certainly I say to you, a rich man will enter into the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. Certainly, certainly, certainly. This is definitely or without question, right? So if you say, hey, can you come to my birthday party? I'll say, certainly, I will definitely be there. So no question, I will be at your birthday party. So Jesus said to his disciples, most definitely and without question, I say to you, a rich man will enter into the kingdom of heaven with difficulty, certainly. Matthew chapter 22, verse 34. But the Pharisees, when they heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, gathered themselves together. So we have the Pharisees, 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 Pharisees. This was a Jewish sect, group of people committed to the Mosaic law and thought they were superior to others, a Pharisee. And then we had the Sadducees, Sadducees, Sadducees. Sadducees. This is another Jewish sect, group of people, who said there was no resurrection or any kind of spirits. You do not follow the oral law, but only the written law. So we always had this joke. The Sadducees, they didn't believe there was a resurrection. So nothing happens when you die. So they were very sad. You see? Sadducee. So in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, it says this. A second likewise is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So then we have this word likewise, 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 likewise. This is in the same thought or manner. So a second in the same manner is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Likewise, Matthew chapter 22, verse 40. 
the whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. So we have the word depend, depend, depend. This is to be determined or controlled by. Like whatever building you're listening from, it depends on good building materials, good building skill, or else it's going to fall down. So it depends on the builder. The whole law and the prophets are determined by these two commandments. Depend. So from Luke chapter 10, it says in verse 29, but he, desiring to justify himself, asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Justify, justify, justify. This is to show you are right or that you make sense to justify yourself. I'm correct, right? I'm okay. You're the one that's wrong. So justifying yourself. But he, desiring to show he was right, asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Because remember, in those days, there was some people who were not your neighbor, like the Romans the people occupying their country. So not everyone is their neighbor. Justify. Romans chapter 13, verse eight. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Oh, oh, oh. This means you should pay something back. So if I owe money, I need to pay back this money. Like if I have a loan. Fulfill, fulfill, fulfill. This means to do a task or a duty. So if I fulfill something, I do it. So you should not have to pay back to no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has done his or her duty to the law. So the idea of owe and fulfill. Romans 13, 10. Love doesn't harm a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Harm, harm, harm. This means to physically hurt someone on purpose. Harm. Love doesn't physically hurt a neighbor on purpose. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. So there you have it. That's all about the Ten Commandments. As always, I hope you're learning English. It's getting greater, easier to speak, and more understandable. And I hope you're really enjoying the Bible as a textbook. So many interesting things just in the Bible itself. So I hope you've enjoyed both. And my pleasure as usual. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.